Well, I always said it would take time. And of course, what are we talking about with time? How Brexit has fared. And report after report is slowly but surely coming out showing that Brexit is having an effect on our economy. And it's not just the pandemic that is having an effect, as the Brexiteers and much of the free market fundamentalists in Parliament would like you to believe. This is their, you know, saving grace almost, because if there was no pandemic, then we would be able to directly see the true impacts of Brexit straight away, right there. That is an impact of Brexit. The biggest problem, of course, is you've got to detangle all that from what is related to the pandemic and what is actually Brexit. And at the moment, and really since, again, since 2020, they've had almost free run to go, oh, that's not a Brexit problem. That's a, that's a pandemic problem. Nothing to do with Brexit. You know, nothing to see here, folks. Carry on, carry on. But that is now starting to come to an end. We've always said that really the more the world gets back to normal, as we are starting to see now, that supply chains, businesses are starting to recover from the pandemic. And that really, even though it doesn't seem like it, there is actually a global boom in world trade at the moment. The problem is, is and we'll get into some very interesting figures in a moment on, uh, on, on this that I've got, it shows that British companies are losing their percentage in that trade and that that will affect our economies majorly, majorly so. So before we do get into all that, please do remember to hit that like, share and subscribe button. And also uh, thank you very much to all the people who do support the channel in ways such as down below in links to my Patreon page and a one-off donation link called Buy Me Coffee, where you can, well, buy me a coffee. And as always, thank you very much to all the people who do support the channel that way. Like I say, thank you very much. So, on with this. Well, turns out there is a company called uh, Python, Ma Python, so Pantheon Macroeconomics. Let me get it right. And it is their, um, their basic job as a, as a company, as a business, to look at a macro level economics, as it said in their name, Pantheon Microeconomics. So they are in they are a company that looks at the macro level, not a big picture, small picture. And sometimes, again, looking at the small picture can be just as valuable, if not more valuable, than looking at a larger picture, because sometimes you see the cracks starting to appear that will sooner or later start to affect the shall we say, the largest scale of your picture. And just going from this, um, <coughs> from their website, it says that they found the damage is more apparent and Brexit appears to be more prevailing, uh, the UK, uh, pre sorry, more preventing the UK from benefiting from the global upswing currently in trade. And as a percentage of total EU imports, the ONS measure of the UK share is below its 2019 level. In other words, UK exporters have lost market share, which is huge. So what is, before you know, market share? Well, any company, essentially, when it brings a product to market, has to compete, obviously, with other products or different, you know, innovations, vice versa. But the point is, is that when you put your product out there, X amount of, of people are going to buy your product, meaning that you have a percentage of market share. Let's say that a new camera company comes out. Well, there's, you know, 100%, shall we say, of the people who want to buy cameras, but so much is owned by Nikon. There's a lot of people owned by Sony. Um, you know, Olympus, if they're still a camera brand, believe it or not. So they're still there. So they own market share. So getting into that share and getting a percentage of that pie is hugely important. And, you know, one of the things, rememberable things, if you may remember a couple of, uh, what was it, last year, we went over a guy who 
basically said, look, you would be weeping if you knew just how difficult it is for a UK company to try and get just 1% market share in a foreign country. You know, and remember, that was back in the days, just early days of Brexit back in January, where we, where we had lost, like, what was it? Um, I think it was like 65%. Uh, uh, 60, uh, 60, it was like 65, 64% of uh, trade at that point. That has still had a massive knock, knock on effect. And now we can still see, even in those figures, that we are still not back to pre 2019 levels is hugely important. And losing market share is devastating for UK companies because, at the end of the day, remember. 30% of the UK's GDP is based on exports. If British companies are losing market share, meaning that they cannot export their goods, then that's going to be a problem for our GDP, the bottom line, essentially. And it gets even worse because, remember, we always, always said that the areas who voted for Brexit were going to feel the pinch of Brexit a lot worse. And... It won't be a surprise that the North East, shockingly enough, is the area that does probably the most biggest points of business with the EU than any other region in this in this country. And, I, you know, it's summed up very simply that someone in London, in the capital, is probably going to be on the phone to someone in Singapore. But someone in, let's say, Humber, Leeds, Sheffield, they are going to be on the phone to someone in Amsterdam, in Berlin. That's their center. And now that they have lost, again, access to the EU, it's very, very worrying. And here's a, another point that I want to bring up. Um, the, where is it? So the Northeast Chamber of Commerce wrote a letter to Boris Johnson about this. And their main point from this um, was simply this. That a survey of its members in March of internationally trading members found that 75% reported that their finances are being hit by Brexit-related red tape, while 73.5% said that their UK-EU trade volumes have suffered. So those are companies that are losing profits, losing money. That is not a good thing. That is not a good thing at all for companies to be losing money. And especially in the Northeast, where we already have significant unemployment problems, companies losing money, losing market share in Europe. We've said it before, less exports means less revenue, less income, less investment will lead to fewer jobs, you know, or even decreasing in jobs. It's not going to be good. And I've said it before that 2022, for a lot of people, is not going to be good. Because hopefully by 2022, we'll have sorted out essentially by that time, got over the blip of the pandemic, and really starting to look forward to the future. And a lot of companies are going to realize, well, hold on. We've lost a huge chunk of our trade and income that we used to have with the European Union. How are we now going to focus? Because we've said it before, the idea that a company can just somehow up sticks and then just start trading with like Brazil or like, you know, Australia or New Zealand or Japan, wherever they want, wherever the Brexiteers want to claim that these, there are these, quote, fantastic trade opportunities, it's not that easy. Because that company then has to get into a new market. And even, as we said earlier from that one example, having to claw out just like 1% is incredibly hard. And they had more to say as well. Because we've got to talk about divergence. Because that is another significant thing. So the, chief, the letter was written by the chief executive. And he said... Britain needed to understand its newfound power to diverge from European standards may come at a cost. 
and that would be most borne most heavily by the northeast, which is most reliant, which is the most reliant region on European trade. It also went on to say that they have chartered with the British Chamber of Commerce over 1,400 barriers currently to trade with the EU, which make life even more difficult for them. And it's not only that as well. Remember when I said uh, exports, um, not exports, but our service sector, 80% of our economy is based on service sectors. Well, guess what? Service sector exports are still 18% below pre-pandemic levels. The numbers are coming in, and I'm really happy that the numbers are starting to come in. Because now we can go, hey, look, we were right all the time. And I'm, and I'm not giving up on that, that we were right all the time when it came to the economic argument. It didn't matter about sovereignty or EU or wanting to take back control. The fact is, economics is economics. And at the end of the day, two plus two is always going to equal four, no matter how much, especially many of the desperate Brexiteers want to try and make it seem like it's the answer is five. So, as always, uh, thank you very much for watching. Please do remember to hit that like, share, and subscribe button on your way out. And, of course, down below there are links to my Patreon page, as well as a one-off donation link called Buy Me Coffee, where you can, well, buy me coffee. And, as always, thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you all next time.